Hey, Steve. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm good. I Welcome heard to you the were, studio. I heard you were here shooting, so I figured I'd ask you 21 questions. <laughs> awesome, let's do it. Do you there have you some time? I do, let's do it. Okay, so what are you shooting today? Today we're playing with a little milk and yogurt. For uh, it, We do a lot of testing to um, explore new things and to pitch clients new ideas. So we spend a lot of time here in our kind of laboratory doing some fun testing. Cool. And can you tell the audience where we are and what it is that you do? We are at the garage. Uh, it's our studio in Midtown Manhattan. We're just two blocks from B&H, actually. Um, and I am a director, DP, and visual engineer, and I shoot content for huge brands around the world, uh, for TV or social or digital or all the formats out in the world today, uh, mostly in food and beverage. And so how did you get started in photo and video? Um, I was that teenager that had the camera around him all the time at every football game and every family event, uh, just shooting what I found around me. And then I went to RIT in upstate New York and studied advertising photography where I got like super obsessed about shooting content for clients. And then over a bunch of years and a bunch of experimenting, I ended up in video. Um, about five years ago, I really kind of jumped headfirst into video and what I've called visual engineering. And what drew you to visual engineering? I'm a very special type of person. <laughs> um, so I'm very much right and left brained. So I, I love, you know, really creative analytical things. And I also like science and engineering and technology. And I wanted to find a way to bring them both together. Um, and that's kind of how I, you know, went, started, that's how I went and started visual engineering. And um, it's been a really fun ride along the way. But it, it's really kind of being like this really scientist type of person, but also an artist. Very interesting. And can you tell us about what's going on next to you? Tell us about your camera and your robot setup. You, you don't have a robot too? No, I, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is uh, one of our robots. Um, it's a Bolt high-speed motion control robot uh, made by Mark Roberts Motion Control um, in the UK. They're actually owned by Nikon, fun fact. And on it, we have a Phantom VO 4K camera, a great way to do a thousand frames a second at 4K RAW. And on it, we have a Laowa Probe 24 millimeter lens, um, which uh, is a PL mount. They make it in all sorts of other fun ways. Um, and with this setup, I can move the camera in really cool, fun ways. And I can get really close and really precise to what we are. As you see, we're just like right off the surface of the milk here. And it's a lot of fun. And how does one even start to learn about these robots and their software? You know, there's not a really good source out there in the world. Um, I found when I wanted to do this kind of work and find a way to move the camera really precisely that there was no access to it anywhere in the world, online, in person, you name it, um, which is a big reason why we're launching the Garage Learning, which is our new educational platform uh, that's launching a Kickstarter uh, very soon, actually it's going on. Um, and with that, we want to bring this type of technology into the hands of more people and have them be able to understand it, learn how it works, start with a, a baby version of this <laughs> before they go all in um, and just understand how it works and when to use it. Cool. And there's a lot of lighting going on here. <laughs> do you, I heard you make your own lights. Yes, <laughs> we do make our own lights. Why? Um, yeah, <laughs> I ask myself that same question sometimes. Um, it's all about the fact that we shoot on the Phantom a lot. Like we're really shooting with the Phantom all the time. And because of that, we're shooting a thousand frames a second. Um, sometimes with this lens, we're at F14. That's a lot of light you need. And because we're not just only doing that, we're also moving the camera and the robot around these big 10, 20K movie lights um, get, get, kind of get in the way. So we made these really small lights that kind of are very much like a Profoto light head, but they have the power of like an RE M18 HMI light and they're dimmable and flicker free at all frame rates. So once again, it, it, nothing existed in the market that they fed the need of what we have, but we're such a small part of the market. So I understand why that is, but uh, they work really great and we've been using them for years now. Amazing. And now you started in visual engineering and you dove deep into robots. What helped you get noticed by brands to create commercials for them? Instagram. Um, <laughs> Instagram worked really well for us. Um, I mean, we, we tell stories visually. That's what we do. It's not as much about the sound and the full theater experience, but you know, 
our, our stuff is just really pops off the screen and, and all, even more impressively, the behind the scenes is like super exciting. People just love like, this is how TV commercials are made. And you know, that kind of thing has really got us noticed by a lot of clients around the world, um, which really is really exciting, which makes me also want to just keep putting even cooler stuff on my Instagram. So what are your future goals for your career in video engineering? take over the world. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, down the line, I would love to get into feature films and doing like really cool, innovative stuff with, you know, huge Hollywood budgets. Um, and once again, pushing the envelope of what has been done uh, with cameras um, in the short term is surviving COVID and keeping this going and moving into our new space in Brooklyn uh, at the beginning of next year. So do you have any projects you're working on or coming up? Yes, we d always have a lot going on, but we have even more going on right now is that we're about to launch the Garage Learning, uh, which is an online platform that teaches the kind of work that we do. So it's breaking down the, the walls between art and science, cinematography and engineering, you know, kind of bringing that all together. Um, so with that, we've been shooting test courses, we've been shooting the kits that we're selling. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. We're also gonna have kits that you could buy and you put together yourself at home. So if you can make your own robotic camera slider, you can make your own LED lights just like us. Um, it's been a lot of work and a lot of effort, but we feel people are gonna love it. And we love giving back information to the world. Um, we're in the realm that we normally are in, which is tabletop. Uh, cinematography, it's usually a very closed door kind of scenario. So we're really excited to peel those curtains back and let you guys in. Cool. And so why do you think it's important to take time to teach others the style of creating, like what the garage learning is doing? People did it for me. I mean, when I moved to New York City after college, I assisted for other photographers and they kind of held my hand and taught me the business and, and like show me the difference between being a student, doing fine art, you know, and being a working professional. So we find globally there's a lack of this kind of knowledge and, and accessibility to a full featured uh, curriculum that teaches you not just the art, the science, but also the business side of it. So, you know, we really want to help people big and small, whether they just want to shoot a, you know, a couple things for their Etsy store or they work for a big brand already. Um, and we want to help them create better content. So switching up gears a little bit, what are some tips for someone looking to get into this style of video creating? Play, you gotta play a lot. You know, I think um, a lot of people say, oh, I can't get started because I don't have a $100,000 robot and a $100,000 camera and $100,000 of lights. And I say, you have a phone, most likely, so, and that has a camera on it, like start using that and just start playing. You do exactly what I have here. It's like a tray with milk. Get your phone and move around it and try to put it in the slow motion mode and, and play with lighting, either whether it's a window light or you have access to an actual light. But I feel like not enough people spend time playing and they spend too much time worrying about how they're gonna get there. I think just, just go one day at a time, learn every day a little bit, and then eventually you'll get there. So a lot of people name their cars. Do you name your robots? Yes, we do. Absolutely. Um, I think every robot needs a name. Uh, duh. Um, so uh, this one right here behind me, this is Bob the Bolt. Uh, we have Robbie, who's his little brother, who's very a lot smaller than him. And we have Johnny Five, who's hiding somewhere as well. Um, and we're really excited to announce that we're going to have three more robots joining our robot family come January. And we're going to need names for them. So can you, can you guys help me? I need some help from you guys to, to name our new robots. Cool. So you shoot so many things. What's your favorite thing to shoot? You know, subject matter isn't necessarily how I define my favorite thing. Uh, we do such crazy stuff every day. To me, it's just the challenge. You know, I think for me is shooting something in a new way, in a new light that hasn't been done before the way at least I would do it. Um, I feel that to me is really the most exciting challenge for me and that's why I do what I do. And what has been one of the most complex shoots you've done? You should have been here yesterday. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we do some insane shoots. I mean, yesterday we had a fireball going on with a bunch of chips flying up in the middle of them while the camera was spinning around them at about 35 miles per hour inside the studio right here. And with that, everything had to be triggered remotely because the camera's moving so fast and had to be run on batteries. And it was insane and I could share the footage with you and you will love to see how this turned out. But we do insane stuff and, and the reality is every day we're, we get crazier. <laughs> And what has been one of the most rewarding or exciting shoots you've done? 
I feel recently we've done a lot of work for some really big national coffee grant brands that I can't necessarily name, but you go there if you drink coffee. <laughs> and um, they've really given us a lot of room to really explore and play and kind of show their, their work in a whole new light. And it's been really fun, even in COVID we did some, and um, you know, it's challenging, but we really enjoy it. Cool. And what has been the weirdest shoot you've done? <laughs> <laughs> oh, every shoot is weird. There's no such thing as the weirdest, but we've um, we put lenses inside of bottles, we put lenses inside of shoes, we've done all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, we had a shoot where we needed like 100 gallons of maple syrup. Um, that was probably one of the most painful cleanups that we've had because it sticks to everything. But um, yeah, we're constantly doing really, really weird stuff. So if you could use one lens forever, which would it be? Oh, that's a hard question. Um, we love so many of our lenses, like this one we love too, but if I, had, if I was on a desert island with my robot, I would have to say the Zeiss CP2 50 millimeter macro is one that I used for years and years, and it, it's such a great overall lens for people that shoot macro like us. It could go one to one. Um, it's really sharp, you know, I, I really like it. Um, so that would be my lens of choice, you know. Cool. And if you weren't a visual engineer, what would you be? I would probably be working for Elon Musk, I think, <laughs> um, or NASA or something crazy like that. I mean, I love the innovation so much that I feel if I wasn't doing my own company, doing this kind of crazy visual storytelling, I'd be working for another company trying to innovate in a different sector. And what has been the best piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I had I, really early on in my career, when I was kind of going from an assistant to shooting, I was like, I was freaking out because a client actually called me for a job. You know, it's, you would think that's what I was expecting, but you know, really early on, you're like, oh my God, my first big job. And I was flipping out and the photographer I would assist for was like, Steve, calm down. It doesn't matter if you don't have gaffer's tape or you don't have all the gear that you might want. He's like, just concentrate on making pretty pictures and making the client happy. And that's what I did. And you know, once again, at the end of the day, you could do a lot with just the gear that you have on you. You don't need everything in your closet to make amazing work. And I think remembering that is really important. Just like concentrate on the story and the creative and making something beautiful. Cool. And tough one, if there were to be a movie about your life, who would play you? Mm, uh, you know, in the most idyllic sense, I think like George Clooney. I mean, he's pretty good looking and <laughs> definitely better looking than I am. Um, and you know, he's got a good seriousness to him, but a little funny side, you know, I, I like him. He looks like he can know science. Um, yeah, I think I would go with George Clooney. And last question, who should we interview next? I would go for a big time Hollywood DP, you know, you know, people that do movies like Inception or Gravity, you know, kind of go into these really hardcore guys that have been doing this for like 30, 40 years. That they, I mean, the amount of stories that they must have, I would love to hear what they have to think and what advice they would give people. Cool. All right, so I'll let you get back to it. Thank you so much for answering all of my questions. And I'll no problem. See. That was easy. I'll see you Come next back time. Come back anytime. Absolutely. <laughs> Come visit the new robot family. <laughs> Have a good day. See ya.